Project Lazarus just released the Honey Badger update yesterday, February 29th. Not only did this update release another weapon, but as always Logitech continues to improve upon one of the most well-made COD Zombies Roblox games to date. Additional contents of this release are new camos and SMG animation updates. As always, I'll do my best to cover all the updates in this release as I can. Usually it's with some archived footage that can support a before and after for whatever the update is so you guys will have a visual of it. Now of course before we get started, if you find any of this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and definitely consider subscribing. And without further ado, let's get started. Starting from the top is the new Honey Badger which is an American full auto personal defense weapon in 300 AAC blackout that can only be obtained from the mystery box. Unpacked, this weapon carries 30 in the magazine and has 270 in reserves. While this gun isn't much to look at, it definitely handles well for itself. The packed version of this weapon, Careless Mistake, holds 40 in the magazine and has 360 in reserves. It carries the Stealth Takedown module where the first 25% of the magazine deals 175% headshot damage. This gun can one-shot up to round 17, has little to no recoil at all, and has no hindered movement speed. Here's the gun in action. This gun kind of reminds me of a cross between the MCX Spear because of the look and feel, but sounds a little like the SL9SD. This gun is a nice mid-round weapon and would be considered a great secondary. I thought that the gun should have been more powerful, but after considering the other weapons in its class, I think it's just right. Other than that, definitely check it out if you haven't had the chance to, I think you guys would definitely enjoy it. Next up, there were a series of bug fixes that Logitech performed on multiple handguns that related to the third person animation code. And while I don't have footage of these bugs specifically, I did happen to capture what each of these weapons look like when invoking their inspect animation in third person and here they are in order. The Beretta M9. The B93 Rafika. The Desert Eagle. And lastly, the Glock 17. Up next, as noted in the beginning of this video, Logitech included third-party animations for the SMGs, so I took the time to get a few of the reload and inspect animations for each of them. Going in order, there is the JS9, the KEDR-B, The MP5. The TMP. The UMP45. And my personal favorite, the K1A. For the P90, I just wanted to note that its damage had been reduced to better reflect the armor piercing characteristics of the FN 5.7 by 28 millimeter cartridge. Aside from that, here is the inspect animation.
the PM9, the AKS-74U, And finally, the R0635. <laughs> and as an added bonus that wasn't on the list, here is the animations for the Honey Badger. Moving on to the F-2000, it seems that Logitech felt that it was performing slightly behind other assault rifles, so because of this he gave it an additional aim mobility as well as a buff duration. Now the 200% damage bonus lasts for 10 seconds instead of 5. When playing with this gun now I can definitely tell the difference, the gun definitely feels more polished. Moving on, Logitech updated the animation code for the ray gun, but there's only one problem with it, see if you guys can spot it here. Bruh. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen. Every time you hit the inspect animation, the arm disconnects from the character's body. I'll be sending this over to Logitech when I'm done. Next on the list is Frostbite, where now a player is visually encased in ice when caught in their own freeze. Being frozen will stop the player from lunging forward when knifing because that only makes sense. In addition, Logitech cleaned up the animation code and added third person animations. This is what the effects look like in third person. And this is what they look like in first person. Next up is weapon camos. Here's the list of all the camos that have been added to this update. Unfortunately they still cannot be saved upon exiting the game. Hopefully that will change in the near future. Moving on to research where immediately going back through a teleporter will now avoid taking you to the teleporter you came from. This one right here cost me a few good possible world record runs. Interestingly enough, Logitech said that I was the only one that reported this problem which made me think I cannot be this unlucky. At any rate though, this is what the bug looks like. Bruh. Second to last on the list is camera, updated code related to camera manipulation. Weapon recoil might be affected slightly but should hopefully feel the same as before. Um, I'm gonna assume that this is talking about when you're spectating a teammate. Unfortunately I don't have any footage of this so I'll just move on. And the final update is no weapon. Getting revived when having no weapon should now no longer completely bug out. So I actually had a video of this which I deleted unfortunately. But say for instance if someone had just the starter pistol, placed it into the Pack-a-Punch machine and got knocked, they would receive another starter pistol. However, once the player was revived in first person, they would go back to having no weapon. But in third person, you would see that the person had a starter pistol and it was in this locked position as if they had no more ammo, similar to what you see here. I hope that makes sense. In my next video, I'm going to be providing some updates on Corrupt Zombies since it's getting ready to be released at the end of this month. Please keep that notification bell on. And as always guys, remember to have fun, take care, and God bless.